Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video, we're going to go over laying out the back panel for the Silex 4 uh, CNC mill project. I usually go to my metal supplier and I get a sheet of 5052 aluminum. It's got a skin over the top of it that protects the finish, and I use that for laying everything out. I usually take all my components and kind of lay them out on the panel to see how they'll best fit. And I also use the plastic wireway. I buy it from Automation Direct. It happens to be the 25 by 25 millimeter. It's relatively inexpensive. It comes in six foot sticks. If you spend 50 bucks or more at Automation Direct, they'll send it to you via Federal Express today at no extra charge. So it's another benefit to using AutomationDirect.com. What I do is I take that new sheet of aluminum and I stick it underneath the old back panel and I use a transfer punch set and I transfer punch the four corners of the, the old panel into the new panel and then I drill it out and I fit it to the cabinet. Once I fit it to the cabin and everything's just right, I'll put a little arrow on it denoting the top of the panel so I know it'll go in that way um, when I'm ready to fit it after it's, the panel's been stuffed and wired. Um, so again, laying out all the components first and I try my best to keep all the low voltage stuff on one side and I keep the high voltage stuff on another side. Um, I also like to use DIN rail um, mounted equipment now, and I use the wireway from Automation Direct, the 25 millimeter by 25 millimeter, and it helps with uh, keeping things neat. Um, as you'll see, I use DIN rail mounted terminal blocks, and I use DIN rails quite a bit. I use a DIN rail power supply instead of the standard Acorn power supply. In this case, I upgraded it to two and a half amp 24 volt DC Meanwell DIN rail mounted power supply to give me more current than the standard uh, one amp or so that comes with Acorn. Um, I intend to use it to power the uh, Power 4 hub uh, just to keep the logic on the uh, SDSK uh, motor drives up. Um, if I need to add another one, I can add another one uh, easily. I'll keep it in mind if I have to add another one. They're rel the power supplies are relatively inexpensive. And then I'll use, be using a 24 volt DC contactor on this build and I'll be reusing the WEG uh, variable frequency drive that I had in the machine previously because it was working and I know it'll work with Acorn. So I'm gonna go handheld and we'll kinda go over the layout really quick and then from that point I'm gonna strip the film off the aluminum and go ahead and bolt everything on it and get it ready to wire. And as I mentioned in the last video, once it's all wired up, I'll once again do a bench test and make sure my motors are turning. And it's not until that point that I go ahead and uh, mount my panels in the, uh, in the cabinets on the machine. Uh, I'm still trying to decide what to do about access to the Y axis uh, servo, which is at the base of the column behind the cabinet. Right now I'm thinking about leaving a, a USB uh, data cable, out, a short one, out of that uh, Y-axis motor and leave it coiled in the cabinet. So, so I have access to it if I want to check for any motor errors or if I need to do any tuning and so forth. I'm also thinking about um, this cabinet, it kind of hangs over the top of the column and it bolts at the top and there's two bolts at the bottom to mount the cabinet. So uh, I'm trying to keep in mind that if for some reason I have to get uh, service that Y-axis motor, then I have enough cable, which basically are my uh, e-stop button uh, cable, the uh, probe header or the probe connector cable, and uh, my home switches. So if I have enough cable there, I'm, I'm thinking that I could just unbolt it from the bottom and then hinge it up a little bit so I can get in there and remove that motor if, uh, if I have to. Um, but it's not going to be practical to cut a big window in it because it's so far deep inside. Uh, it, and then, then I have the chance of getting swarf and so forth inside the cabinet. So I think this is the route I'm going to go. I think it's the best way. By leaving a USB cable plugged into that motor and leave it coiled up in the bottom of the cabinet, it can always be accessed so you can if there's an error on it, you can read the error uh, using the PC to see what's going on. And the, the USB cable's not all that expensive. So let's go handheld and take a look at this really quick before I peel the skin off of it. Okay, here's the back pan again. I, I laid this out, the acorn and the uh, relay board. I always tend to put my variable frequency drives up in the upper left corner. And then there's my DIN rail that'll hold. Um, E-stop contactor, 
power supply and some DIN rail terminal blocks. I think I got more than enough uh, space on that DIN rail for everything that I want. Um, I'm going, to, I've ordered a couple of circuit breakers. Um, I'm gonna bring in uh, a 20 amp, 240 volt circuit into this and then I'm gonna put a two pole breaker here for the, for the VFD and then I'm gonna put a two pole breaker here for uh, power to the, uh, to the control itself. And the Technic uh, IPC5, I'll probably put over here. So that's my plan so far. So the, I've got a pretty good general idea how I'm gonna do this. I just, like I said, gotta mount that power supply. Um, here's the IPC5 power supply for the motors. And I'll probably go ahead and set the uh, power hub down below it. But uh, the one thing I didn't really like is this power supply is mounted from the back. And trust me, we don't want to mount it that way. We don't want to have to remove the back panel to be able to unbolt the power supply. So what I'll probably do is I'll get a strip of aluminum that runs the length of the power supply plus maybe a half inch top and bob and I'll drill a hole here, here, and then countersink some screws uh, that will bolt that strip to the power supply. And then once it's installed, mount it top and bottom uh, to the back panel like this. So um, that's where I'm at. I'll uh, come back here in a little bit once I've got everything mounted up and uh, let you take a look at it.